Hi, and thanks for joining us for another one of our videos from Family Marine. My name's Tom. Now, this video, we're going to talk about pontoon trailers. And this video is kind of designed for those people who are buying new boats from us with a trailer. Now, of course, a lot of people don't buy a trailer, but some people do. So what we want to do is go through and describe to you and show you how to use your new trailer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up in the front and then I'm going to go to the back and then we're going to talk about some other things in the middle. Okay, 99% um, of the trailers today are going to come with a two inch coupler. So that means that you need to have a two inch ball on your vehicle and it's going to come with the flat four, one, two, three, four is the ground wiring harness. Now there's lots of extra wire in there so if you needed you could pull that out. Right? So um, some of these are flat five. Now the fifth one is for the brakes if you have brakes on this trailer. This trailer does not have brakes so it only has a flat four plug-in. So you may need to have the round adapter. You know let's say you only have the round plug-in like the camper style. You may need to get a, an adapter to go from the round to the flat four or round to the flat five, whatever you have. Okay, so once we get this coupler on the ball, of course, we got our little safety pin we take out, we latch it down, we put our safety pin back in. All right, we hook our safety chains up and we tilt our tongue jack. This is a swivel tongue jack, so you can crank it up off the ground and just swivel it level. Okay, so this trailer has brakes. This is electric brakes. This is the actuator. For the electric brakes. Now most electric brakes are going to come with the round plug-in. So this is a camper style plug-in that you probably have in the back of your vehicle. You just plug this in. But this is the brake style for electric brakes plug-in. If this were hydraulic surge brakes you may not have the round one. You probably have the flat five and the fifth wire in there is designed to when you put your vehicle in reverse, that fifth wire gets 12 volts and engages a solenoid inside the tongue that prevents the brakes from going on as you're backing up a hill. Okay, so if you didn't have that and you're trying to back up a hill with hydraulic brakes, the brakes will lock up. So to, to prevent that, they put that solenoid in there that engages when you put your vehicle in reverse and prevents the brakes from going on as you're backing up a hill. Okay, on our winch, first thing you notice is we have a safety chain that's hooked to the eye underneath there, and we have a winch strap. Right now we've got the strap tight. So if we were going to launch this boat, the first thing we'd want to do is take a little bit of pressure off of this lever and flip that so that we can release it, right? So this is ratchet up, and it gets tight. And to get it to, right now I can't move it because there's pressure on it. So I got to put a little pressure on that. Now I can flip it and unscrew it. And now I can disconnect the strap from underneath the boat. Okay, on the back of the boat, we're going to have a couple of transom tie down straps. There's going to be one on each side. And trust me when I say this, you cannot get the boat off the trailer unless you remove these. <laughs> because these are holding the back of the boat to the trailer so when you go down the highway the back of the boat isn't bouncing all over the place. So transom tie downs, yep, you have to take those off. Now, we're selling Tebbin brand trailers and I can't speak for every brand that's out there, but Tebbins are using LED lights. Some of you may remember the day when we had incandescent light bulbs in our tail lights and you had to disconnect the plug from your vehicle before you back the boat in the water because if the hot bulb were to come in contact with the cold water it would pop all right with leds we don't have to worry about that they don't get hot so you don't have to disconnect your light wiring harness from your vehicle before backing it down into the water if you want to you certainly can the other thing that since we're back here i want to point out are the load guides now on tevin trailers we use full length, really long, 12, 14, 16 foot, depending on the trailer, horizontal load guides, not post style load guides. All right. So what they do is they help guide the boat onto the trailer 
and that way it gets centered as you're loading the boat. And I'll talk about loading in just a little bit. Okay, so as we come up the trailer, this happens to be a tandem axle, and we have uh, this customer, this happens to be a sold trailer, he upgraded to the aluminum mag wheels, it's an option. And if you have aluminum mag wheels, uh, we torque the lug nuts to 90 foot-pounds before you leave. Even on the steel rims, we torque the lug nuts to 90 foot-pounds before you leave. We also air the tires before you leave. But with aluminum rims, it's suggested by the manufacturer that once you drive it 100 miles that you re-torque the lug nuts to 90 foot-pounds. Now, some of you may not have a torque wrench at home. If you do, great, but if you don't, eh, just put a wrench on there and tighten them up. Make sure that they didn't come loose. Okay, a question that I get asked a lot is, how do I get the boat off the trailer? Well, of course, the first thing you do is take off the transom tie-down straps, like I just talked about, disconnect your winch strap and safety chain, back it into the ramp, and float the boat off the trailer. Some people say, well, what if my launching ramp is kind of shallow and I can't completely float the boat off? Well, yeah, you know, uh, there are times when you're in a real shallow launching ramp and the boat won't float off the trailer. I get in and I start the engine, I put the motor in reverse and I give it the gun. I give it all it can take. And sometimes I even have to take the steering wheel and wiggle it back and forth, right? In order to get the rear, which is floating, to do this so that the boat will back off the trailer, back off the bunks, right? So that's how you get the boat off. Now, next question I get a lot is, how deep do I back the trailer when I want to put the boat on the trailer? Well, there's no perfect answer for that, but what I try to suggest to people is I say, put about three quarters of the bunk. Notice your carpeted bunk runs all the way to the back of the boat. About three quarters of the bunk under the water, leaving about one quarter of it out of the water, all right? So the idea of those load guides and some of the bunk being out of the water is let's say that these are your two bunks. I'm sorry, let's say that these are your load guides and these are your tubes. Here's your load guides and here's your tubes. So that as you bring the boat onto the trailer, the pontoons hit the load guides and the load guides start to guide the boat on and it swings around and you can power the boat right up onto the trailer. That's why I don't winch a boat onto the trailer. You can if you want, if your launching ramp is really shallow and you're fearful of hitting the bottom with the propeller, maybe you want to get it on most of the way, stop, get out, crank it up via the winch strap or the winch. All right, but most of the time I power the boat all the way up. I just give it more throttle, more throttle, more throttle until the bow of the boat hits my bow stops. All right. Sometimes I'll have my wife stand on the dock and she'll do this. She'll tell me how close I am to the bow of the boat from the bow stop. So she kind of guides me on. Okay, regarding maintenance on the trailer. Um, there really isn't much to do on these trailers anymore for maintenance. However, you should once a year grease your bearings on your trailers. Now in this particular trailer, this has some cosmetic covers over the bearing louvers. So you take a small screwdriver and you pop that cap off and inside there is a zerk fitting. So you take your grease gun, you stick it on the zerk fitting and you pump it up five, ten times and you're pumping that bearing full of grease. It's so always recommended that once a year you do that. If you bring your boat trailer in to us for winterizing along with your boat, we do that. That's part of our winterizing process is to grease your bearings and air your tires. Uh, tires tend to lose air over the winter just seems to kind of seep out a little bit. So one of the things that we always do is air the tires to make sure that there's enough air in it when you take it home next spring. Okay, so that kind of covers things on the trailer. They're kind of basic, they're kind of simple. And um, if you have any questions, you know, certainly feel free, welcome to give us a call. We're here to help you. And um, I want to thank you very much for watching. I want to thank you very much for the purchase of your trailer and or your boat, your motor, your sea legs, and whatever else you may be purchasing from us. We really do appreciate it. And uh, again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks again.